Hello to you all and my kindest greetings to all you lucky people to be owning and sailing in, the, uh, in, our, in our young 88. The best yacht, uh, <laughs> shall I say, in the world. Of course, yes. Yeah. Now you might want to know um, why I'm here and not over with you. Well, unfortunately, um, um, my, my doctor thinks that I, I shouldn't be traveling that far at such a quick time, especially when they, they, when they, what they might do to me when I get there too. So uh, you just never know, do you? Anyhow, it's, it's, uh, as far as the pit water is concerned, I can picture you all there. Yes, and I can almost picture the, the, the pit, pit water. Um, yes, I've sailed on the pit water, but uh, not as often as I'd love to have done. I sailed on, on uh, Buckle Up and sailed up outside the heads and back and so on, but, but I've never actually raced. But it's a wonderful place and it's so, it's so nice with all the sandy, sandy beaches, even on the inshore side. I wrote an article uh, which was published in the October issue of the 1980 Sea Spray magazine, in which I advocated the Young 88 and another boat which I called a Rocket 31 as being very suitable for this. So, anyhow, all this was a, a sprat to catch a whale. I hope that I get somebody that might be interested, as, as we always do. We just we publish the design and hope somebody gets interested in it and uh, you may end up with an order. Um, so <clears throat> here we go. Um, a year or two passed and then somebody took an interest in the Young 88. The end result was that um, uh, I sold the plans to some people and the boat started it and um, uh, and um, it happened to be uh, Greg Elliott, you'd know Greg Elliott, uh, uh, his sister and brother-in-law were interested in getting a young 88 built <clears throat> to these plants. Now, at the same time, Roger Land and his friend Owen Lockerbie both could see the potential in this boat. They also got keen on it. They decided that, they would, that there was a future in, the, in this boat that they could, could go into business Building these boats in permanent fiberglass, in fiberglass, uh, as mass production boats. <clears throat> so there, there was an arrangement made where um, uh, Greg built this hull, and he built the hull in Roger Land's factory, uh, and using the, the, this new method of construction, which I believe was the first yacht ever to be built using that particular method of construction. That, that method has become very almost universal now. The first boat was built and it was launched and the, the first one to be sailing was Paddy Wagon. Now Paddy Wagon was uh, 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 belonged to Ross Field who as you, as you know is a very well, well top class yachtsman with, of, world, of world renown. Now, now, the first time I saw the, the uh, first young ADA sailing, Paddy Wagon, uh, a friend of mine, uh, Gary Bajant, who was a uh, belonged, who was an editorial, uh, editorial in Sea Spray and a well-known photographer, came out with me in uh, my twelve-foot tin boat with the outboard motor and um, to see this boat for the first time and see a sailing. Well, as it happened, it was the last few days of August, and you can just remember that that's about the coldest time of the year. And um, here, here's Tad Paddy, Paddy Wayne sailing along, looking pretty terrific, we thought. And um, Ross was unhappy about something, and it turned out that he was, he was he was afraid that the propeller hadn't folded up properly, hadn't folded properly. Now what does Ross do? He takes off every inch of his clothing and slips over the side in this freezing cold water and frees the propeller and jumps back aboard the boat. Yeah, the, I mean, modesty was, uh, didn't come into it, of course, 
but uh, it was quite a demonstration in many ways in one, <laughs> if, I might, uh, if I might say so. Uh, but um, they went from one from strength to strength, and one of the greatest things that the that the Young 88 Association, which had been formed by then, was they brought in a rule. Uh, which was that every boat had to come out of those fiberglass moulds. Of course, I couldn't sell any more plans, but that didn't that didn't worry me. That didn't worry me at all. I was just pleased to see more boats being built. And at that, the fact that the eighty eight association has has um, made that rule has kept the boats as close as a, to the strict one design, uh, which is which is one of the major factors in a success, apart from the fact that it's a very good boat anyhow. So, I'm often asked the question, what would you do if you were to design the Young 88 again? I, my first answer would be, uh, nothing. The Young 88 is as near, as near, in my mind, uh, the perfect answer to the, the various parameters that it was inten intended to, to fill, which was to be a comfortable boat with standing headroom, for average people that is, and um, with a boat that was, above all, was pleasant to sail, could turn on a sixpence, which is a great safety factor when in a crowded anchorage and all the rest of it, and um, uh, and above all, it had to, had to look nice and be in, in nicely in proportion. So, uh, to my way, the I was thinking the the the, the eighty eight is a, is a um, one of the smaller keel boats that that everybody can uh, that most people can afford if they want one, and it's a pleasant little boat to sail, and it can stand stand all sorts of weather conditions. It'll sail and like all the rest of the boats. It'll sail, sail. The more people you stack on the weather deck, the faster it'll sail. But that applies to just about every yacht. You've only got to look at some of these um, 90 footers and, and, and you can't count the number of crew that are sitting on the rail. I just sometimes I look at them and I wonder how on earth they, go, how on earth they feed all those guys. Well, I've always been interested in, in high speed high speed sailing. I uh, I designed the first racing uh, catamaran in New Zealand. In fact, it was it was built to beat the Aussies, beat the Aussies, and and so it happened that it did, and it beat it beat the Aussies. This is the unrestricted 12, 12 foot cat, and um, it uh, beat the rest of the fleet, including New Zealanders, by such a big margin, about half an hour around a course, that they banned cats. And um, cats were cats were looked on with great suspicion for quite a long time. So the um, But as for foiling, well that's a different thing. And uh, I can see that uh, the, the ultimate the ultimate in fast sailing is going to be foiling is going to be foiling with uh, with uh, flying rigs, with kite kite type rigs, not necessarily kites, but kite type rigs where the wind takes the weight of the kite, and where and and uh, where the kite is tending to lift to lift the boat clear of the water, and where the problem will be to keep the thing in the water rather than lift it out of the water, and this is I think it is the only form of sailing with kites. Is the only form of sailing that doesn't rely on weight for its for its power. So hmm. wonder. I wonder about this, and I wonder about that. Um, well, you think about things and 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 uh, why this happens and why that happens, and um, very often you just you you, you realise something. That you've known all the time, but you didn't actually realise it. You know, I could talk forever about all this, but uh, you know, you guys, somebody might go to sleep, so I better, I better, better stop it now. And um, I must say, wish everybody a, a wonderful regatta, 
they'll, they'll, they'll be very keen to hear, hear what, what happens and, and uh, may, the, may the best boat and best crew win.